Hello and welcome back. This video will be the second half of lesson 2-4, solving equations with variables on each side. We're going to continue with example 5 and we're also going to keep open the multi-step equations here. Uh, the first one says we want us to write an equation with grouping symbols. Instead of solving one, we're going to write one, then we're going to solve one. It says find the value of x so that the figures have the same area. So the value of x so the figures have the same area. So what we're going to have as a general equation is our rectangle area should equal our triangle area. And then you're going to have some prior knowledge on how do you find the area of a rectangle, how do you find the area of a uh, triangle. Now a rectangle is going to be length times width, and the triangle is going to be one half the base times the height. In the context of this problem, the base is going to be our 12, and the height is going to be our 2x minus 6. Okay, so the area of the triangle, length times width, is going to be the 5 times the x plus 4. And since the x plus 4 it represents the entire side, you've got to make sure you put it in parentheses, which they did here. And the area of the triangle, of course, is 1 half. They chose 12 as the base here. And the 2, 2x minus 6 is a grouping as well because it's representing the entire height. So the equation, 5 times x plus 4, equals 1 half times 12 times 2x minus 6. And that will represent that, that situation. So this is the area of the rectangle equals the area of the triangle. All we have to do now is solve this. Uh, first thing we want to do is simplify this multiplication right here. Because if you look back on multi-steps, uh, step one is try to simplify both sides of the equation completely first. So 1 half of 12 is going to make 6. So we're going to simplify that first. Then the next thing we're going to want to do is to distribute. So we're going to distribute here and here, which will give us a 5x plus 20 and here will give us a 12x minus 36 and then on the next step for whatever reason here they decided to eliminate the constant term first I prefer to eliminate the variable from one side or the other first but we're gonna go with what they did so they're going to add 36 to both sides and remember this will zero out the 36 over here leaving us just with 12x so 12x plus 0 is an identity on the left hand side the 20 and the 36 simplify to 56, and the 5x just comes down. And now we really have a two-step problem, but it's a little different than what we're used to doing because we still have variables on both sides. So instead of getting rid of the 56 first, I'm going to get rid of the 5x first. And this is why we should have done the x's above on the previous step instead of this one, so minus 5x. And this side right here is going to give us 12x minus 5x, which is 7x. And the 5x minus 5x over here zeroes out, and 0 plus 56 is an identity. And of course, our last step is to divide by 7 on both sides. 7 divided by 7 is 1. 1 times x is an identity. 56 divided by 8, 7 is 8. So if they put an 8 in place of the x for each of those figures, their areas would be exactly the same. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can complete the check on your own. Okay, so this one says uh, find the area, I'm sorry, find the value of x so that the figures have the same area. So we still got figure 1 and figure 2. So we're still going to do the same thing. So we want to have the area of figure 1 1 equals the area of figure 2. Uh, the one on the left hand side is length times width, so we're going to have 10 times x, and that's going to equal uh, the right hand side. We have a 6 on the outside, so 6, and then this measurement is not just 3 or x, it's x plus 3. Now I'm going to simplify a little bit by distributing here. I'm just going to get rid of the parentheses on the left hand side, so 10x equals 6x plus 18. And now I'm going to subtract 6x's on both sides because the x 6x has the smaller uh, coefficient, so minus 6x minus 6x. And that will leave me with 0 plus 18 on the right, which is an identity. And on the left-hand side will leave me with 4x. And then of course the last step is to eliminate the 4 by dividing 4 on both sides. And 4 divided by 4 is 1, 1 times x is an identity. And that's got our x over here. And then 18 divided by 4 leaves us with 4.5. So this is in centimeters, so it would be 4.5 centimeters. All right, for this part of the, of the uh, lesson, it's going to be a little difficult. We're going to talk about identities uh, and equations with no solutions. Now, there are three possible scenarios. we got one solution, no solution, and an identity. And you can see what it says right here about one solution, exactly one variable or one value of the variable makes the equation tr uh, true. Essentially what that means is there's a variable left in the problem. If you have a variable left in the problem, the variables do not drop out of the problem. 
then you are guaranteed to have one solution. The other two have no solution identity. Usually there will be no variable left in the problem, depending, depending on how you solve it. Uh, sometimes you can see the left and right hand side are never going to equal uh, or they'll always equal. So if the variable completely drops out of the problem, meaning no variable left, and the statement that's left over is false, if the statement's left over is false, then we would have no solution. If the statement left over was true or will always be true, then that would be an identity. The best way to figure this out is just to see some examples. So here's example six. You can see they have uh, parentheses, so we have to distribute the parentheses, or distribute to eliminate the parentheses. So we're going to distribute here and here, and that will give us 6y minus 30. We're going to distribute here and here, and that will give 20 plus 6y. And then they decided to subtract 6y from both sides. And what happens is the 6 minus 6y on this side gives you 0y, so the y's cancel out on the left, leaving you with negative 30. And on the right-hand side, 6y minus 6y also gives you 0, canceling out, leaving 20. And this little symbol right here means not equal to. Now, if we had accidentally left it as negative 30 equals 20, this statement right here would be false, meaning there's no solution. Now, they're using the not equal to symbol instead. Uh, that's true, but it still has no solution because the left and right-hand side are not equal to each other. So since negative 30 does not equal, but this equation has no solution. Example 7, we still have to distribute here. So we'll distribute here and here, and we end up with 5x minus 5. And then when we simplify that, we get 7x plus 5x, which will give us 12x minus 5. And at this point, you can actually see the left and right-hand side look a whole lot like a reflexive problem, which means you're going to have infinitely many solutions. Uh, this is going to be an identity. So if I try to subtract the 12x's from both sides, these cancel out. And they, they actually subtracted 12x minus 5 on both sides. But if I subtracted the 12x's from both sides, we would have a negative 5 equals a negative 5. In either case, if you're left over with a true statement and there's no variables left in it, then what you have is an identity. So it says, since the expressions on each side of the equation are the same, this equation is an identity. And another way you might call that is reflexive property. Uh, it is true for all values of x. What this means is the problem has infinitely many solutions. Infinitely, this word is many here. Just trust me on that infinitely many solutions. Go ahead and pause the video and try the check. Okay, so for part A, the first thing we gotta do is distribute. So we're gonna distribute here and here, and that will give us 8g plus 48 equals, distribute here and here. The 5g was not touched yet, so I have plus 3g plus 48. Now if I combine my like terms here, I have 8g plus 48 equals, now these two right here become 8g also, plus 40, I've got my g, plus 48. And you can see the two, the left and right hand side are going to be exactly the same. So if I were to try to cancel out my g's on both sides, you see 48 equals 48, which is a true statement. So this is an identity. I'm going to abbreviate that with ident. Part B, distribute again right here. So we have the 5x plus 5, that was the first part. Then that's going to equal the 15x minus 12 minus 10x. And if I combine my like terms here, so I still have 5x plus 5x equals. Now 15x minus 10x leaves me with 5x. And I still have a minus 12 here. And you can see the left and right hand side are not even close to being equal. But if I try to cancel my 5x's out by subtracting 5x from both sides, what we have left over is 5 is equal to negative 12, which is a false statement, which means this one has no solution and there's a symbol we can use for that it's a little like an o or a circle with a line through it, it means empty set or null set it means the same thing as no solution letter c i'm going to subtract 3w from both sides and I end up with 2 equals 7w minus 3w we're using a 4w when i divide both sides by 4 I have w equals 1 half and since i still have a w left in the problem or a variable left in the problem this one has 1 distinct solution. For part D, I'm going to distribute. So I have 6B minus 3. 
Don't forget the minus 7, 6b minus 10. When we combine these two right here, we have 6b minus 10 equals 6b minus 10. That looks like the reflexive property, which means even if I were to try to cancel out my b's on both sides by subtracting 6b from both, I have negative 10 equals negative 10, which is a true statement, which means I have another identity. And what that really means is there's infinitely many solutions. So no matter what I put in for the value b, the left and right hand side will always be equal to each other.